Hey, how's it going? Jeff here from Deep Cycle Battery San Diego. Thanks for watching this video. Um, if you found us, you're probably searching about the Intense Taser battery, um, E-Mountain Bike battery, or the Shimano Steps motor. All of this video is going to talk to you about is to take care of your 48 volt lithium ion battery that comes in the down tube of the Intense Taser mountain bike. Maybe the do's and don'ts. I've read both of these manuals as far as to give you the best information to maximize the life of your battery. This battery is very expensive and we don't want to have to replace it prematurely. So after reading these two manuals, I have noticed that they do conflict a little bit as far as the do's and don'ts with the battery. But let's talk to you about this. So you do have the Shimano Steps motor. It's a uh, E8000. The battery part number is a BT E8010 48 volt lithium ion battery, which means if you were to dissect this battery, which please don't, you avoid the warranty. But if you were to, you would notice you have cylindrical cell, lithium ion cylindrical cells all welded together in series parallel to give you 48 volts and 500 watt hours of energy, 11.6 amp hours. That All those numbers mean is how much energy can this bike put out, which translates to you and I, how many uh, miles can we get? So on the other day, I was out riding in San Diego and I was down to my last bar. Actually, I'm sorry, my last two bars. And I decided it's time to come back. And the reason why is because, again, the bike will go into turtle mode at the last bar. But on this particular day, it was a hot day in San Diego, I was doing a lot of climbing, I had noticed that the temperature of the battery was, was almost hot to the touch. I didn't think anything about it because you know what, when batteries discharge at a high a rate, they create heat. So it was natural. What I found out later is when I got back to my house, the battery was still warm to the touch. And to my surprise, when I plugged in the charger, the charger was it gave me an error message where I now was concerned, like, oh great. Then I remember the battery has a thermal protection, so it cannot be charged at a high temperature. This is good news for you and I. The battery will not let you be charged, nor should be charged it when it's in a high, a high temperature. The manual says that uh, you do not, if you live in a high climate or a hot climate area, you do not want to charge this battery at high temperatures because it'll hurt the battery. The manual also says if you live in a very cold climate, the battery energy will not last as long, which means your bars will go down faster when you're riding than you were in a, if you were in a mild climate, which makes sense. Cold temperatures suppress battery output, which I know from doing the other batteries. So it makes total sense. Now this battery comes with a, uh, the, again, this battery is located in your down tube and it has a battery strap that comes with the battery. I highly recommend using the strap and I'm a big believer in leaving the battery in the down, the, inside the down tube when I charge. Uh, you just simply connect the charging cable to the charging port, uh, which has a dust cover right here. The reason why I recommend leaving it in the down tube when I charge it, or when you charge it, is because the risk of dropping this battery. I do not, nor do you, want to drop this and let this battery hit the ground. Any kind of impact could compromise the lithium ion cell integrity. Uh, it's not likely to happen, but is there a potential? Yes, the, the lithium ion can have thermal runaway, which means fire, if the cell integrity has been compromised. Now, I've seen pictures of this battery pack dissected, and there is padding to protect it. However, with that said, according to the manual, if you did drop this battery significantly, you should never reuse it again. Now, what I'm interested in doing is because I'm exceeding this battery uh, on about 20 miles, I'm actually using up all the capacity on, on the battery. I'm discharging it down to one bar. I want to send this battery out and have larger cells put in. Uh, those cylindrical cells can be rebuilt with larger capacity lithium ion cells by a professional and I can get more range out of it, and more, which means more watt hours. I will avoid the warranty, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, I, so the quick takeaways here is when you decide to store your bike, you should never store it with this battery in a low state of charge. What does low state of charge mean? Anything less than 70%. When I come back from a ride, I know I'm going to ride again in the next few days, I 100% charge the battery. If I'm not going to be riding this bike for weeks, let's say, then I'm going to max, I'm going to only charge this battery probably to four bars. Okay? I don't want to keep this battery stored in a 100% state of charge. Stores mean, sto storing the bike means weeks and weeks. The worst thing you can do is to let this battery be at one bar, or God forbid less, and store your bike. This battery probably will discharge and stay discharged. 
and you'll have a dead stick or a dead battery. Um, so you definitely want to be on top of this, okay? Uh, the battery will break in from brand new after about 100 to 200 cycles. So what is a battery cycle? Um, well, first of all, let's talk about this. This battery, this manual, says you have 1,000 cycles, and this one says you have 500, so there's a conflict there. A battery cycle is when you discharge it to a certain point, let's say it's 50%, which would be uh, three bars, let's say, and then you charge it back up. We could count that as a cycle. These manuals don't reference the depth of discharge. But let's go back to that. So if we discharge to 50% and charge back up to, 50, uh, to 100%, we could count that as a cycle. This battery, again, will maximize, it will reach its maximum capacity after about 100, 200 cycles. Uh, the charger will self-terminate. If you leave the charger plugged in, it will actually turn itself off after about, I think, 15 minutes, maybe 20, um, which is nice. Now, should, should you do that? Um, I don't think so. I personally like to pull the charger out of the charging port. Um, I'm sorry, I terminate the charger by pulling out the AC power when the battery is fully charged. I don't like to leave chargers running when the battery is maximum capacity or state of charge because I still believe that the charger is putting out energy and over time it can overcharge a battery. Uh, and the manuals here do, do conflict. One manual says that you plug in the uh, that you plug in the charger into AC power and then introduce the core to the charging port. The other one says the opposite, I do believe. I believe that you charge in the cord to the port charging port of the battery first, and then you plug into AC power. The reason why is because my friend has a, an expensive Chinese mountain bike. The charger was plugged into AC power, and when he connected the cord to the charging port, it arced. And that was bad. It blew out a circuit on the battery. Um, the battery, when you charge it, I've tested the load on an inverter. I was out, I wanted to do some camping, and I wanted to do a test. This draws 185 watts when you charge it with a uh, uh, with the charger. It takes about uh, I think four hours to fully charge. Actually, a little bit less in colder climate. It's going to take longer to charge. Um, and that's really about this video. So if you have any questions, please hit us up in the comments. I'm going to put all the details I just explained down below in the uh, content section and then possibly give you some links down the road. We're gonna rebuild this battery pack with larger capacity cells and we're gonna measure the range um, before we do that with the stock and then on the same trail with the larger capacity cells. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a like, subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon and take care.